everybody, Trisha here at Club Scrap with your Shibori page kit assembly tutorial. Um, I've got my printed instructions, it's just a little four page document, and if you happen to have a tablet on hand, just use that for your instructions and save the paper for your scrapbooking. Um, I also have the collection here which includes some beautiful ribbons, in fact this, this uh, this one right here is brand new um, to us, and I just thought it was so perfect for this. Um, we've got some little wraparound tags, our pre-cut photo mats, we'll be starting with those. Um, a gorgeous um, silver charm here, and then this beautiful stencil, which you're going to love for all kinds of things. And we've got some really fun scalloped washi tape, and of course our 12 by 12 sheets of paper, and our cut aparts. So let's get things sorted in order. We'll start with our photo mats. I like to just get that out of the way right away. And to figure out which photo mats I need first, I consult my uh, instructions for page one and two. I can see the second ingredient listed here is um, three dark blue photo mats. So let's go ahead and grab those. I am organizing all of my items in, I have four pockets in my accordion pocket file here. So I'll just file that away. Um, that goes for layouts one and two. And if you don't have the accordion pocket file and you're a member, you'll have access to a tutorial to make one for yourself. Otherwise, just keep four separate piles, one for each double page spread we plan to make. All right, then we have three sand colored photo mats. Now, if you look carefully, there is a darker shade and a lighter shade. So the sand is the lighter shade. All three of these go in the pocket for layouts three and four. And looks like we use three brown photo mats in five and six. And guess what? Three medium blue photo mats in seven and eight. Next, let's put our papers in trimming order. To figure that out, I always start out with my trimming instructions. So here is our order. We'll start out with one of those white triangle prints. So we get two kinds of prints here. The triangle one is the one we're going to trim first. I'll put that plain side up on my work surface. Then we're going to go to the white square print. That's pretty obvious. Then we have a medium blue plane and then a dark blue plane. The next few things, once I get all these trimmed, I like to trim the cut aparts. We'll start out with the one that has all the border strips on it and then the other miscellaneous sheet of cut aparts. Finally, we, I like to stack my layouts from layout number eight to one. So the base papers used on layout eight will be the two sand planes. And then um, we'll move on to a white triangle print and then a dark blue plane. And we only have a few sheets left here. We need a white square print, a medium blue plane, and then two light blue planes. That is everything we need in the order we'll be using it. And let's just dive right into the trimming phase of the operation, starting with this first piece here on page two. Um, so the white triangle print we cut at, this is really difficult, seven inches. Boom. Both of these pieces are used in layouts one and two. Next we'll take this white print. I use the art as a little bit of my inspiration here. So my first cut is at seven and a half, and when you do put this in your trimmer, um, just kind of check where it's landing. In my case, that seven and a half inch cut literally cuts right on the lines of the squares, on the, you know, on the edges of, of a, one of those uh, squares. So just keep rotating the paper until you reach that point. It's, it's not that big of a deal. Then I'm going to slide this down to five and a half. And once again, that lands me right on the line between all the squares. So this large piece in the base of my trimmer is used in layouts seven and eight. And then the other larger piece is also used in seven and eight. That leaves me with this narrow piece. Now, if you look at it carefully, you can see there's a seam in the artwork right here. And then there's a shorter one over here. What my goal is, is to create just boxes with four squares in each box. So I'm just going to cut off the seam here and that puts me at about just a little over 11 and a half inches. I'm going to make a series of two inch squares but really all I'm doing is just separating these so that each piece is a set of four squares of artwork. 
So it's really not a measurement, it's just using your eyes to recognize where those boxes land. And each square, again, is approximately two inches. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. So one, two, three, four, five squares. And then I have two other little pieces that don't get used. The five squares will be used in layouts five and six. Okay, moving on to our medium blue plane. And our first cut is at 11 and a quarter. Then 10 and a half. Nine and a quarter. Eight. Five and a half. And three. Wow, lots of strips there. And as long as you haven't moved them, they're all in the order they need to be in. Now rotate this three three inch piece so it's horizontal and cut at eight and four. You've just made three rectangles. File one of them in the pocket for three and four. One for five and six and one in pocket seven and eight. Next I'll pick up the very next two strips which should be the exact same size and if you're feeling brave and good today go ahead and trim those horizontally at the exact same time. Okay so our measurements are nine and a half, seven, three and three quarters. So these two that we ended with both go in pockets seven and eight. The very next pair of squares also go in seven and eight. And then we've got hopefully four pieces that are the same size. Three of them go in pocket one and two, and the last one goes in seven and eight. And again, if you're not using the pockets, just use piles. Finally, we have this dark blue print. We'll cut this at eight and four and a quarter. Rotate the four and a quarter so it's horizontal and trim at ten and a half and five and a quarter. These two pieces you just created are filed in the pocket three and four. And then this little guy, I'm afraid to tell you, is a scrap, but it's tolerable. The very next strip, which uh, measures three and three quarter by twelve, will be trimmed horizontally at eleven and a quarter. Seven and a half and three and three quarters. All three of the squares you just created are filed in pocket three and four. And once again, we have a little tiny scrap we won't be using. Lastly, we have this four by 12. We'll trim this horizontally at six inches. I see here, we have more filing to do. This is uh, pocket for five and six. And then I forgot about all of these narrow, untrimmed strips from our medium blue. My apologies. Okay, let's go ahead and file this one on the top. It's one and a quarter inches by 12. That goes into pocket five and six. Then this one that's also the same size goes in one and two. We have two narrow strips that are the same. One of them goes in one and two, and the other goes in three and four. All right, now we're moving on to the sheet of cut aparts, and that corresponds with the artwork that's on page one of my instructions, the diagram on the left. I will follow along with the um, cutting marks right on my printed piece here, and I'll line those up with the outer edge of my steel blade on the trimmer. And that puts my first cut at around 11 inches. And then just go on down the line, separating each strip as you follow the registration marks. Okay, this large strip, that's pretty amazing. Put it on three and four. Then we have this um, shibori pattern with some journaling prompts that goes in seven and eight. Next, it's time to make your soul happy. That also is filed in seven and eight. And then this just beautiful triangular shibori pattern, five and six. You have some real skinny ones here. Um, this lovely pattern goes in three and four. Then we have some polka dots. We have a skinny one and a wide one. They both get filed in one and two. And then go the extra mile, five and six. That's it for the strips. Now we have our 
uh, last piece of cut aparts and as always make sure the narrowest piece will be trimmed from the paper first so um, this lovely shibori pattern is on the right and then what a lovely day is on the left <laughs> Now that we have our last strip, we'll rotate horizontally and trim the most narrow piece off first. What a lovely day is used in layouts one and two. And then we have these journaling prompts. One of them goes in five and six, and the other is used plain side up in three and four. And this little guy, pause and be joyful, seven and eight. Let's grab our next strip, place it in the trimmer horizontally so the word date is on the right. Happiness goes in five and six. I may not have lost all my marbles just yet, but there is definitely a small hole in the bag somewhere. <laughs> that goes in seven and eight. We have a journaling prompt. One of them goes in three and four, and the other one and two. And then there should be that tiny little piece with the word date. That also goes in one and two. All right, now here we go. Dare to dream. We're going to place this on our left into the trimmer. Okay, dare to dream. That goes in seven and eight. This journaling prompt goes in one and two. The other journaling prompt goes plain side up into seven and eight, and then this little piece of artwork goes in one and two. Next, we'll trim just these squares off the end here, and then one rectangle. This is a this is a, a sentiment, and one of the fun things you can do with these is just cut apart each individual line, ink the edges, and add it to your page, which is what I did in my um, initial sample. But this entire quote is used in layouts five and six. Then we have the rectangle, that's seven and eight, and the two squares are actually used plain side up in five and six. One last strip, trim off the end. This pattern is used in one and two, and these this little quote is seven and eight, and that concludes the trimming. Let's bring out the base papers for lay pages seven and eight. Now before we get started with our actual layouts, I want to show you how I um, used the stencil in this kit. I have one of the sand uh, base papers ready to go here, and my stencil. I also have Club Scraps Sapphire ink and then one of our awesome ink applicators. And um, as you may already know, the lid of the pad fits onto the base to make a larger handle. And um, all I basically did for some of the decor element on this layout was to place the stencil into the corner of the paper. And one of the things that um, you may find really helpful is to actually use some washi tape to hold the stencil in place. What's nice about the washi tape is that it applies but then unapplies quite easily with my desktop blotter here on the base underneath my work surface. And then, I mean this is especially if you're newer to stenciling and you don't feel as comfortable um, just to have it taped down. And then also if you want to protect the uncovered areas, sometimes a, a piece of scrap paper um, can be really handy. I have a big stack of this here. I wish I could just share it with all of you. I have so much uh, scrap paper <laughs> available to me. But you can also uh, place that down so that you don't have stray pieces landing in areas where you don't want it. This did not stick, so I can fix that just by lifting up my scrap paper. Okay, when you are stenciling, here's a tip. Just make sure you pull away some ink. And I usually land on the stencil and then, or on my scrap paper and then pull outward. Just gonna make sure I got this covered here. And this doesn't have to be a lengthy process. You'll notice I'm making longer sweeping motions over the surface of the stencil. And this is just a very basic one color ink application. Nothing real super complicated here. Um, it doesn't create a huge mess, which is which is very nice. And I did um, a fair amount of stenciling um, just on 
layout seven and eight. This was the only time I felt I needed the paper needed just a little pick me up. Okay, so I mean that was it. It doesn't have to be uh, difficult or highly time consuming. So when I pick this up, you'll just see that the pattern has been transferred onto my base paper. And that'll be it for our demo of this. And once again, you see that the the washi tape is a wonderful uh, tool for protecting our work surface. Now when I made my actual page, I did a bit more stenciling than, than what I've done here, uh, but I just wanted to give you an idea of how that worked. Next, I'm going to go into my folder and take out the contents of pockets 7 and 8. A lot of little parts and pieces here. And I'm looking at the image on my instructions that is found on the right side of layouts 7 and 8. So this is what we're, we're looking at here. And I'm going to take the wider of the two, this is page eight, those two square pieces and place it there and then intersect it with the border strip that has the journaling prompt on it. Now what I ended up doing was stenciling here and within this area. So it really fit quite well. Um, the other thing that I did, and I will do this right now, is after adhering this base paper, onto the edge. I took some washi tape and just stretched it across and you just rest it right up against the edge of the paper and that just creates a nice little contrasting element here and completes the space with my stenciling. Okay so then I follow that with my photo mats. Just one of the larger ones on this side and then I have two more narrow ones. And the way I set this up was so that the top edge of this narrow mat matched the top edge of the larger one. Beautifully subdivides the space. Then we have a quote. So first I attach this to the mat. And then I'll trim a piece of ribbon that's slightly wider than my piece. And then I'll just tie a knot right into the ribbon. Just one single little knot. Nice and tight. Okay, then with some tape, I'll come through and bring the ends of the embellishment around to the back and tape them down. Now I'm ready for my embellishment. Beautimus. Okay, then just down in the lower right here I used, if anything is worth doing, do it, do it with all your heart. I inked the edges of this just to kind of bring forth that sapphire ink. Um, and just use my little ink applicator, which I love because it keeps my fingers away from the ink, which then keeps ink from places I don't want it to land. Just attach those pieces at an angle. Okay, then I will add to the top of this the base for layout seven and kind of build the other half of this. I did the same type of thing where I put the, the piece at the top and stretched out some washi tape just beneath it and then added this happy border. Finally coming back in with two horizontal photo mats and then two vertical mats here, which were then nested. Now, I wanna say a word about these two pieces. You'll notice that these are not exactly proportionate. This one is used plain side up to the base. So you have the option of just kind of trimming a little bit off the blue. It creates a really funky measurement I didn't wanna mess around with. So um, if you would like, you can just go ahead and eyeball <laughs> You're trimming to make sure that this is scalable with that. Um, I also took just a little piece of this ribbon, and when I when I do these things, here's a silly little tip, but I think it, it's awesome. I make a, and it, correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's a parallelogram shape. Trapezoid? I think it's a trapezoid shape. <laughs> I don't know. I don't care. Now the ribbon wants to bend in this direction. Don't try to go against the grain. Go with it and just fold it in half. It creates just the most sweet little thing and then lay it on top if you cut apart and staple it on there. 
you know what helps is if you have staples. <clears throat> so, and that's oh, again a sweet little accent here. And then finally, you can go ahead and add pause and be joyful up here. Now notice all of things, all of these things are sort of squared off and nice and neat there. Okay, that would be layout seven and eight. Let's move on to five and six. All right, the base of layout six, and again, I'm looking at the right side of this image, layout five and six. This is the spot we're working on right now. Um, we're gonna begin with two four by six photo mats, which will then require us to just take a little bit off our photo, and then a vertical tan or brown photo mat here. Um, beneath that, I have a nested pair. So that's the happiness never decreases by being shared. Should have a mate, and it does, and nests perfectly. And then down beneath here, I have two white squares that should fit nicely there. I chose not to have them this side up. However, if you want to, that's your absolutely your prerogative. Now on the right edge here, I have trimmed each individual line of text with a scissors, or you can use a trimmer, whatever. I mean, I kind of like the haphazard look of a scissors doing this, <laughs> but again, that's that's really a matter of like how much time you have on your hands and your personal preference. So each line is cut into a little piece, and then um, I take that same ink applicator, ink the edge, and then I use my favorite needle tip glue applicator to apply glue to the back and then place it along the edge of this layout going all the way down, word by word, line by line. And you can kind of angle things off a little bit, it's just very, very sweet. And in the case where a word, I'm gonna move this to the left, where a word overlaps onto the photo mat a little bit, that's totally okay. I just wanna remind you not to apply adhesive then to the left edge of that piece if it will overlap. Some of the words will, some won't, really no big deal. Um, but it adds a really sweet touch to it, more of an informal feel. The base for layout five is this deep blue color, and I love how these squares then flank the top edge of our page. Um, for those of you not already aware of, of the awesomeness of the 3 by 14 grid ruler, I of course started by um, getting my zero center here, so I'm getting a six on either side, and the first square would then be centered um, and then evenly spaced after that. So I use that grid ruler to help make sure everything looks beautiful and well aligned. Um, then along the top, I added a title followed by a piece of that um, scalloped washi tape right beneath it. Um, I did the same thing at the bottom. I added this border strip and put the washi tape above it. Um, oh, forgot to mention, we've got a nice matting strip here for this border to create some contrast behind it. Two vertical brown photo mats and then one vertical journaling piece right in there. So that's a, that's a nice setup. Then we have these really stunning rings and I have to tell you I think I'm going to get some extras of these and I want to make um, a bracelet where this is the center and then I have a knot going around and then it kind of knots up on the other side. But I thought this would make a cool pendant or a cool bracelet. Maybe both, I don't know. Let's just trim off some of this ribbon and I'm gonna make a loop out of it. Once again, checking to make sure the direction of the ribbon flows easily with the grain. And then just pull the ribbon through the, the circle and then go around and grab it like so. There we go, that looks really good. Then we'll kind of put, decide where we want this piece to live on the layout and bring those ends around to the back of the page. You'll, you'll tape those to secure them once everything else is stuck down. And then all I did to keep this from flying all over the place was just put some adhesive on the ribbon on the back and then stuck it to the layout and then it stays put right where I want it. Let's move on to the next set of pages. Our base for this layout, number four, is the white square print. And of course, I will take the contents of pocket three and four out of my file folder. And um, we have a series of three dark blue squares that we're evenly spacing. That's one of the reasons I always have to take off that little scrap off the end 
of a piece like this. So it started out as a 12 inch piece, which is the same height as the paper. Take away that three quarter inch scrap and now I have these pieces that fit perfectly down my page. Uh, vertically on the left here we have a sand colored photo mat. And then I'm subdividing the space with a vertical medium blue strip nested with this decorative strip. Okay, and then I have a nested journaling prompt here. I want to quick show, show you what I did. We have these cute little wraparound tags. So how did I get that tag to wrap around? Well, I took um, our awesome, love this cutting mat, our awesome club scrap cutting mat, and I also took a craft knife. And what you need to do is just cut a slit into the journaling prompt that matches the width of the tag itself. And that's pretty easy to do, just freestyle, which is what I'm doing. This is a freestyle <laughs> moment here. Then um, one of the tags has a self-adhesive backing on it, and that's a really sturdy spot. And then all you do is just run it through the slot, remove the backing, and then marry those two ends together. And what I plan to use for this is um, I'm going to put a highlight or a single word or a date from the event that I'm journaling about in this space. And then I'll just attach this to my uh, medium blue mat. Now on the right side of this layout I used my other really cool circular word charm and I wanted it to sit right about here so all I did was took this gorgeous canvas ribbon, looped it through one side, and then trimmed it so I'd have enough ribbon to tape the ends around to the back. And then I took another length of ribbon and did it the same thing in the opposite direction. And I just kind of fanned out the ends in a V shape. And then that way it looks like it's sitting there. And that should suspend that charm right where you want it to be. The remaining items here, include my border strip at the bottom and then this is like one of my favorite little jigsaw tricks we have these two sand photo mats we have two four and a quarter by five and a quarter pieces that fit and that's just like perfect I mean I don't with this between this border strip my two mats and my two trimmed pieces Voila, it really, really works well. And then I just did my little ribbon trapezoid <laughs> method. And I'll just attach that to this. And you're ready to adhere. Okay, I'll set this aside. We'll move to our final pair of pages. Everything from our first pocket comes out of the pocket. And we've got our, a light blue base here for layout number two. We also trimmed these larger pieces and I want the largest piece to be on the right or to be on the right side of the layout but flush with the left edge. I hope that makes sense. And then I have a, to anchor the bottom portion of this page. We'll take this medium blue strip and nest it with the larger tile or larger strip here that says make it simple but significant. And then with two angled uh, pre-cut photo mats there and along the right edge we just have two more of these with another trimmed in staple. This is just such a great way to use ribbon. I like how it just draws the eye to the journaling prompt and that's ready to go. How simple can that be? Then I'll just slide the base page for layout one up to the front and I began with an anchoring strip with this dotty border and then above it I added the washi tape and below it I added this other little pattern design and the main feature here is this guy with three little flags little wraparound tags attached and I did the same method I just cut a slot for each of them and put them to the right um, on this header strip here See how this fits right in place? And then supporting that from underneath with smaller photos, we've got a row of three squares, followed by another journaling prompt with some stapled ribbon and my date. Oh, I did forget to slide this guy 
and that's going to be on the right edge of my layout so that when I take my left edge of the other layout the print looks like it's one piece spread over the two pages that my friend is the shibori collection all the trimming all the placement all you have left to do is grab your adhesive and of course your trusty 3x14 grid ruler and put everything in its place add your pictures and you're good to go thanks for joining me for the shibori page kit tutorial have a good one